Hey guys, uh, welcome back, it's Lucid. We are going to be doing the uh, Pretender design, or as I said at the end of last episode, the Pretender overview uh, for McCone. And basically you can see I had very little variance in my thought process. Um, I made a bunch of Pretenders. I think this is the one I ended up going, well, no. It's probably the one I went with. Um, I'll explain my, th my thought process. One is, um, some of our mages get old, some don't. I mean, some some of them have the uh, old age tag where unaging doesn't affect them, so they will be old no matter what. Some can we can reinvigorate to be young. Uh, in my opinion, the young ones actually make super good budget thugs. Um, so I think that's what we're going to be kind of relying on here. Um, and then unaging is just going to go, even the ones who are old, I think, will get less afflictions. So, uh, to have a bunch of guys not dying off all the time will be really nice. So, that's kind of the plan for this. Um, minor poison resistance. If we run into any, we're playing early age, so there's Pangea. I think we have a Satis too. I don't know. If I'm getting poison assassin, like, swarm assassin, this will be super invaluable. It's also really nice if, you know, if somebody's putting up foul vapors. And then reinvigoration is really nice. It's one of the hardest things to deal with when you're thugging if you don't want to put many items on somebody. So, uh, and it's also good for if they we're not thugging, if we're just being mages in the back casting stuff. So, mm, very, very cheap bless. Um, we end up taking magic one, which I think is nice. Going drain, I think. Uh, would hurt you a lot because you have kind of shitty researchers to start with. Um, we got Order 2, which um, I know a lot of people take turmoil with, uh, with this nation, and part of the reasoning for that is you're going to have to be patrolling a lot anyway to take care of your unrest. Like, Order in and of itself isn't going to deal with it. So I think I'm just looking at this as an income scale, but then also as... Um, yeah, I think it will reduce some of the unrest before I kill population by patrolling. I was asking on the forums, I think that's how it works. So that's the thought process here, is I have less pop kill from patrolling. Um, and yeah, more income. And then this also is going to allow me, like, you, if you go turmoil, you can't really get pelt tests. And I think pelt tests, like your little shitty spear throwers, are actually a strength in the early game. Like, just showing up with a few hundred of them, and then some elite troops in the front that are going to deal with, like, thugs or some kind of god or something they send at you. Uh, that seems like a good plan to me. Mm. Okay. I mean, it'll fizzle out pretty quickly and not be good, but I think for a while it will be good. If I just run over one person next to me with Peltasts, I'll be a happy camper. Um, okay, next we've got production, or productivity. Uh, we're at productivity three. This is so we can crap out our good units, uh, our giants every turn. We are neutral temperature, which um, is heresy in the Dominion's community, but I'm rocking it as per usual, uh, because it's really expensive to take, to trash this income scale. And like potentially, if I trashed it one way, I'd probably go towards heat because uh, we have pretty good fire magic. But I would rather have money. And we already have shitty income. So I think, I don't think, I'm not going to treat that as an excuse to have even more shitty income. Growth 3. Um, I'm, we're basically going to be playing scales on a nation that gets a pretty substantial penalty to income. But hopefully through that, we'll actually have okay income. Um... And then luck three, because I freaking love luck three. It's one of my favorite scales. And it's not going to be affected by our stupid unrest. So this is the build I went for. Now, I think you could do other things. Um, the other thing, like if I were to do a, like a significantly different build, uh, it would be an imprisoned rainbow. But you can't really do that, so you have to do it on the Demi Lich. Um, so you could do something, you know. You know, I don't even know. 
what you would pick, right? But you, I mean, you'd pick the the re the resistance buffs and whatnot. Like major shocks resistance, major fire resistance, major cold resistance, probably. You know, because there could be a Niflheim or something. Configuration. Right, and so that's the basis. You know, for a thug, you kind of like Blood Surge too, but you could probably get by without it. So, if you're trying to be economical and go mostly scales, you probably want to go something like this. The order of preference for me would be... Maybe leave that neutral. Something like this, like these are pretty damn good scales. So I don't know. Something around this. This is a little low on Dominion. You probably want six, but if you go six, you probably want seven. Tank one of these. Something like this. I think this would be reasonable. Um Yeah, and you could potentially do this, and then you could potentially do this. Right, so you have different options for playing with luck. I personally like luck a lot. Um, but, you know, not everybody does. So, uh, this would probably be the rainbow I would pick if I did a rainbow. Calling that Rainbow Lich. Um, part of the problem with playing Macon is you really don't have a lot of Pretender chassis open to you. Which I think is a cool idea if more nations were like that, but like taking a kind of crappy nation and then giving them limited Pretender selections kind of like a kick in the nuts. There's a lot of things with this nation that I think are like kick in the nuts. Like, you're not. Like, they could get rid of the Fort Unrest penalty, and you wouldn't be, like, overpoweredly strong, I don't think. I mean, you don't... You're not, like, a phenomenal nation, I don't think, compared to other nations. Uh, I think I have a test game. I thought I did. Well, let's open one up super fast. Um... Let's do Macone, and we'll use my current pretender. I think it's this guy. So let's take a look at who is old and who is not. Okay, we know the Cyclops is Okay, so we've got all these guys. So, you can see our... Actually, we're not really doing that bad on Unrest. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, you get this event once a year. I think it's in the autumn, where you want to have an E4 present. That if you do... You basically, you're going to lose some population through this event. Um, if you don't, you're going to get a shit ton of unrest. So, uh, it's only going to happen in forts. So, it's something you kind of want to do. Um, so, let's take a look. This guy... Oh, wait, still old. Hooker. These guys all still... I thought I got rid of... Okay, this guy, Archons aren't still old. I thought I got rid of it on one other dude. Oh, I guess these guys are both hard-coded old. Oh well, we'll still get way less afflictions. So... And then having these cap-only mages not, you know, tuck her out and die all the time will be kind of nice. Um... 
So, I don't know. It's okay. I guess it's less good. I thought the E4s weren't hard coded. Or not the E4s. I thought these guys were not hard coded. Um. Oh, well. Um, we actually, let's go ahead and we should be able to afford some basic gear. Well, let me just wait till I get enough pearls that I'm gonna do an impairment. Is there somebody nearby that would be astral? No, probably not. Okay, we'll just alchemize some. So, okay, what are we gonna make? We will make you a budget, a very budget thug. You're gonna get a frost brand. I think that's it. Let's just see how you do with only a frost brand. Earth power, iron skin, blessing. You might need a vine shield or something. Yeah, I took her flesh. Not super effective. Just crap these out for a minute. Um, maybe we make them armor of the knights. So I think this should be budget thug worthy. So summon earth power, iron skin, blessing. I think temper flesh is going to be actually worth it. Hold attack closest. Okay, let's see if he does any better. I've got heavy cap, not good. Let's hope we get Tipper Flesh off. I didn't actually test this part, so I've already picked my pretender submitted, but it's turn one right now. Holy shit. Died retreating. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. Not terribly impressive for first thugging. Part of it, I think, is being old sucks. Kind of shitty penalty. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this is the pretender we went with. Uh, you could also probably somebody had mentioned doing like a, a Titan of Forethought. We're obviously gonna have to figure this out a little better if we're gonna do well, but uh, I've tested some things. Um, so. The Titan of Forethought would be a kind of cool chassis. You could take him dormant, he could come up. I think people that did this were playing, like, Turmoil. Um, my thought is, like, he's cool and all. Um, and having a disease healer is nice. But you already have super combatant chassis with your master... Or with your elder cyclops or whatever. So, I don't know. Uh, but I think that's it. We've... We basically have a pure scales build, and then the slight thing that we have for a bless 
is going to make it so our cap only mages don't keel over and die. Um, and it's going to make our other mages slightly less old. Because um, the, the severity of your old age penalty is determined by how old you actually are. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it for pretender design. Kind of quick. Um, yeah, take care, guys.